I'm a gallery owner, and uh -huh. I'm trying to understand how does um, the procurement of art mm -hmm. actually, um, where does it fall in the process? Okay. I, to, to answer your question, I don't know, but it could, I could see where it would. I mean, for example, if you were to exhibit artworks in my building, the first thing I would say, or anybody would say, that, that sh they should say is, where is your insurance certificate? You have to have at least a million, two million dollars worth of liability. Why? You put the painting up, the painting falls down, hits a kid, uh, you know, does damage, bodily injury to him. Who's going to pay for that? If, as building owner, I'm responsible. But why should I be responsible for your painting falling down and, and, and injuring someone, okay? Or what if you nail the painting in the wall and, you know, you do damage to my property? You, you know, normally when you're renting a space, most people don't know this, but you're liable if you, if you damage the premises, you know, that you're leasing, okay? Now, you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't be required to do a bond. Now, that's another example of, you know, in the, uh, in the past, uh, Different organizations have said, oh, we got this bonding person for you, and the bonding person, all they knew was bonding. That's not good. Because now things have changed. Insurance is more relevant now than bonding, simply because of insurance certificates have become a big issue. I won't get into that unless you understand that and you have a question. But that's, a bigger, that's sometimes a bigger issue. How do you think uh, the county or Sound Transit you know, their insurance brokers are advising them on how to tell you what to do. Now, if you don't have an insurance broker that can advise you, guess who's going to lose? And guess who's going to have a lot of headaches and so on? A particular deal on some insurance I had to get was a writer for uh, some sort of exclusion. Uh huh. Um, and it would go for five years, and I had to buy the additional writer. Okay. In order to do work for this general contract. Okay. I was. I haven't been required to do that with maybe only one. Sure. Mm -hmm. But it's, I understand. It's kind of like one of those things where my insurance broker says it's coming. So if you've got it uh -huh. in place, uh -huh. you know, for several years, then uh -huh. if it comes up, we already yeah. have it. Yeah. Well, the first tactic that I would take with that is I would say, well, Mr. General. We'll be glad to do that. The premium is $10,000, so our bid just went up by 10000 And usually they will say, well, uh, never mind. Usually. Right. Okay? So that's how valuable uh, uh, someone who has your, who is, who's working for you is. And see, the person that's talking to you, generally he or she doesn't know what they're talking about either. Exactly. Okay? My but the brokers do. Would... Could you offer three to five tips that would help a contractor avoid the circular and the rotating pitfall that both of you were talking about. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I can do that, but because, see, what is happening is that everything is knowledge-based. And if you don't have the right knowledge, I mean, you wouldn't think of, if you were, someone said, well, you know, you're accused of murder. You wouldn't think of trying to do that without a really, you get the best attorney you could get, right? And so you need to get the best insurance agent, broker that you can get. And, and most of the agents and brokers are not, they don't do a lot of bonding. Well, how do these contractors know what is a good broker, what is a good agent? What are questions that they can ask? Well, you, you, you kind of pick, just pick one. And then when you say, well, I want to get a bond. Well, first of all, I'm telling everybody here, if you're serious about being a contractor, get bonded or get approved for bonding. Bonding is like a, a line of credit. You don't have to use it, but you could go to your agent or broker and say, look, I want to be approved for bonding. What can you do for me? Now, if he says, well, I don't know, there's nothing I can do, then you need to find someone else. Now, part of the reason that it's hard to find brokers is that I wouldn't want everybody here to ask me to be your bonding broker because there's no money in it. But if you wanted me to help you, I would say, look, I don't want to write a bond for you if I don't write your business insurance. There's more money in that. Getting bonds for small businesses is hard work, time consuming. Generally speaking, <coughs> most good agents or brokers will tell you privately that if, you, if you're not developing, let's just say $10,000 a year in premium, that's not something that they really want to get involved with. You know, 
you figure the agent and the broker is going to get about 10%. And I have people, I hear people say, well, you know, I want to pay $500 a year. Well, that means that the broker or the agent is going to get $50. That's hardly worth the effort, so to speak. 